Welcome to the podcast. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hello. I'm Nathan. I'm Zechariah. It's Zechariah. <laughs> I'm Casey. And Thank you for joining us. The House of Flambeau podcast. Episode number two. Second one. Numero dos. But the sound quality is going to be better. Yes. Better sound quality. I think it would be hard to get worse from uh, last time. We could do it. <laughs> we could if we tried, yeah. We, we could actually try to have worse quality. Really shitty yeah. quality audio. Yeah. That could be a thing. We, we could just say it's avant-garde. There you go. It's uh, art. Yeah, it's yeah. like a... It's a I mean, I guess Burzum, that was his thing. He wanted <laughs> yeah. to make uh, as like uh, as opposite as he could from good music, I think, you know, from the little bit I've listened to him speak. <laughs> he, he didn't like the corporate sound, so he wanted to have like it sound unproduced, I yeah. guess. I don't, I well, don't really definitely know the does. terminology. He definitely hit the nail on the head on that one. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. It's, it's very underproduced, yeah. It's possibly the worst music that's ever been made. Yeah, it's well, up there. You know, there, there's a lot to be said about that in, like, you know, like traditional painting art, too. Like, yeah. some of the most expensive artists in the world are guys that stand over a giant canvas with different cans of paint and just kind of, you know, push the paint all around the place and and flick it all over the canvas, and they sell for billions of dollars. Yeah. Hell, yeah. I should have gotten the art. Well, the, if you just sling paint all over a canvas and you don't have like a bunch of friends that are rich and fuck kids then yeah, yeah it's just gonna sit in a garage yeah. somewhere yeah you're not getting shit i want to see the painting i guess that epstein had of bill clinton i heard that i would love painting. to see that yeah, yeah burzum's terrible that is like that is i am mad at my dad music <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> daddy did love music yeah where's dad why is he working late yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally literally put into song But yeah, okay. Did yeah. You, did you see where um, they gave Andrew Cuomo a Emmy for most old people killed in nursing homes? What it should have been for. My Andrew Cuomo's governor of New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they gave him an Emmy for his coronavirus, like conferences, like his his his, his press conferences. Oh wow! So it actually is low key, like for killing the most homeless people in nursing homes. Like, like they're bas- basically saying, like, "Hey, this isn't leg- like coronavirus isn't real. We're giving him an Emmy." They they only had like seven hundred and ninety views on the actual like Emmy video on YouTube, so nobody fucking That's cares. That's hilarious. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's like, "Yeah, we already know that like this is all bullshit." And most of those views, but are Emmy is just mostly fiction, right? Oh yeah. Well, they do give them. You know, they give them out for news and stuff too. But mm. is it local or is it for like the big ones? It's a big one. It's a okay. big one. He got the found the founder award. Okay. Which I don't know exactly what that means. I'd have to look it up. I'm sure. You know, I just think it's funny that he got an Emmy. Yeah. Of all people, you know, he wasn't the best. He's kind of just a prick. I looked that. I looked up today, um, and a lot of the elite, a lot of. The wealthy are buying secondary passports now, and they say it's risen since all this has started, the coronavirus stuff. Like fraudulent passports? No. Like, you know, I guess, you know, you go over to some oh. some other country, and they say they cost around $100,000 and get a passport out of there. I guess it's like a dual citizenship or something for tax yeah. evasion. What the fuck? But yeah. it's gone up. Yeah, everybody's going to leave, man. Yeah, I mean, you think all the wealthy are going to leave? Where are they going to go? Yeah, I don't know. They're going to go to fucking Puerto Rico or something. Yeah. I was actually going to ask if you knew like where most of those were coming from or if there was like a, a spike in certain areas or regions. I don't know. I was just looking at Drudge Report today to like try and think of things to talk about. And uh, that was one of the things I saw. And I read about it, but I don't really remember anything about it. I was just <laughs> like, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. You know, yep. the, basically the headline was rich people continue to evade tax. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> I don't think yeah. the taxes are all they're evading at this point. Yeah. They're evading them uh, secret jails that Ellen DeGeneres is housed in. Yeah, or that she's <laughs> she was going to go to, but now she doesn't have to anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's called Guantanamo Bay, I'm yeah. pretty sure. If you really just, like, <clears throat> just try to, like, look at everything, like, you and on person, yeah. it's really fun. Yeah. It's oh, really, for it's sure. It's exciting. It's purposeful. It's a good fight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, they're all about to, now that they've got Trump out of office, they can go back to kidnapping kids and... 
drinking their blood and yeah adrenochrome fest 2020 <laughs> yeah. kennedy jr will just remain an enigma forever he's not actually going to come back we thought he was we who really is it what, what do you mean kennedy jr oh, have you, you've never heard that you never that heard that one conspiracy it's probably one of my favorite ones honestly oh no no i guess i've uh, only seen the iceberg of QAnon. <laughs> yeah it goes deep yeah bro it goes way no down they're now. they're convinced that uh john f kennedy jr you know the president's son um you know how he he died i don't know if you knew this or not he was running as the um i think the uh congressman or the senator for new york against hillary clinton like uh, a, a while back i think in the 80s and this was like in the middle of the the race for it him and his wife took a plane and the plane apparently crashed and there's this whole huge deep conspiracy where like uh they couldn't find the bodies and so for a period there they like housed the um like i think i don't think it was their cremated ashes it might have just been a representation of of like holding their essence or whatever in these blue tiffany boxes and this will be relevant in a minute just hey hang on with me and uh whenever uh, Trump and Melania came to the White House, they gave Obama and Michelle a blue Tiffany box. And so people are convinced that uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. is actually this guy that's like best friends with Trump and that he's at every rally and they'll like circle him in all the videos and be like, this is him. And then they'll overlay old pictures of John F. Kennedy over this guy and be like, see, he's just got a fake nose and a fake mustache and fake eyebrows and fake glasses and or this Trump, is him. Trump just got somebody that looks like Kennedy and put him back there. Yeah, like I guarantee you, there's a Trump uh, cabinet member that's like helping this QAnon thing go. It's like it's so so obvious that something's there. <laughs> like uh, a lot of the QAnon people do actually for a while believe that it it was Trump who was doing it. Dude, that'd be hilarious if it was Trump the whole time. Well, I mean, they I don't know. <sighs> they're sitting at night. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. There's a lot of it that's like f- fucking ridiculous, but then there's other parts that are that are strange, I guess, and maybe it's all just a, a massive coincidence of. Um, I, I'm sure that a lot of us remember that time that like everybody the in the media made fun of Trump for drinking a Fiji bottle with two hands. Uh-huh. And okay, well that yeah, happened, like, and everybody made fun of him for it. Yeah, he's got little hands because he's got little baby hands, and he drank yeah. it, and it was very awkward when he did it. It did not look right at all. But I, I remember on QAnon they were saying that this was supposed to be symbolic of like, I don't know, massive deep state arrest of giant pedophile <laughs> rings, you know, or something yeah, along ridiculous. those lines. It was ridiculous. What's funny is my aunt is like hardcore. Oh, into she's really into QAnon. QAnon. No, no, Cindy. It's conspiracies for boomers, basically. Oh, for yeah. sure. It's Tom Clancy novels that are like written <laughs> yeah. by fucking retards. Uh-huh. That's what it is. It's like uh, they literally went to the Andrews Center and scooped up some people with mild Down syndrome and were like, can you please write a story about <laughs> the saving of America? I really think that it's his son. I think His it's- son's f- pumping in. Who, whoever, Whoever's doing QAnon should get an Emmy. Yeah, they, that Far should be the promo. Exactly. Yeah. They should be getting the fuck People should here. respect the fuck out of that psyop. Because it's writer. so retarded, but it's so, like, I guess Obviously good. Obviously, it's in, it works. you know, in capturing, because a lot of people, yeah. like, swear by it. Oh, I mean, it was sure. so popular in Uprising that, like, they, they banned all QAnon topics, groups, and hashtags on Twitter and on Facebook. And all that, don't you realize, all that's going to do to those people is convince them that what they're talking about is 100% undoubtedly correct. And that's what that, that's <laughs> why I, th- I wonder if it's like, uh, maybe it was the people that were against Trump that was doing QAnon. To make it seem ludicrous? Yeah. Yeah. I think that works Ooh, on both sides. Yeah. So it could be that. Yeah, but then what does that say about his demographics? <laughs> That bought into it. Yeah. So when you told me about this certain song, we both know that is a boomer that sold me weed. I hadn't gotten high in a while, and I went over to his house, and he wanted to smoke a joint with me before he sold me the weed. So I smoked a joint with him. I got really fucking high, and then this fucking fifty-five-year-old man proceeded to tell me about Ellen DeGeneres being secretly locked up right. in a jail, and they're right. just doing reruns and shit. Yeah. And that was hilarious. <laughs> 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 or watching them try to pick apart her little. She she did a Twitter post that was like issued to Tom Hanks about like trying to do a, a card. No, it was to uh, what what's his name? Um, well, they did uh, David Blaine. David Blaine. Uh, she 
yeah, trying to show him that she couldn't do these card tricks. And yeah. they were, like, going through the cards being like, this card represents this, this card says this, and this card is numerically, uh, ge- ge- geometrically uh, equivalent to this number. And Yeah, it was pretty, it was actually pretty interesting. It, it was interesting. It made me want to believe QAnon. Oh, well, really I, don't, good. I don't ever say that it's not interesting, because it is very interesting. <laughs> it's definitely interesting. They had you in the first half? Yeah. They had us in the first half, I'm not going to lie. Really, the whole video was good. Yeah. They go on about how Tom Hanks posts weird pictures of, like, trash. Just random pieces of trash. It's not pieces of trash. It's one abandoned oh, article that's of clothing. Right. Like one glove like or one, one glove, shoe. Or one, one shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Shit like that. And he He's, explains it that, like, you know, oh, what's the story behind this shoe? Like, what happened to its partner? Why did it get left there? What is, yeah. you know, what is its history? And He's they're like just the convinced it's American actually. Beauty. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's just his victims. It's his victims. That he's killing? Yeah. Yeah. It's their stuff. Well, like Garth Brooks, man. That guy seems like a serial killer for sure, man. Have you watched any of his videos? No. Yeah, he's just I'll a strange start, cat. And Neil McCoy does. I haven't, I haven't... He seems psycho as fuck, dude. I've met him quite a few times. and met he's him just, once. Man, he's weird. He did seem a little over-enthused yeah. to talk to me. Yeah. Probably how I'm blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting the good blood because I kind of topped out in the 90s, but I still get a little drip. <laughs> and that's what drip came from. Yeah, drip what? Adrenochrome. Like they use... Adrena drip. Drip, you know, that drip. You never heard that? <laughs> like, a, I guess in slang or something? You know, you yeah, you got yeah. that drip. Like okay. you got that drip. Yeah, you got that drip. Yeah, two chains is like sucking the neck of a 14-year-old. Probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's got that drip. I got that lane. Drip, drip, drip. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's all the, uh, that's a adrenochrome slang. It's adrena drip. Yeah. Adrena drip. Adrena drip. I like that. I want to try to get, I'm going to start talking about it every single podcast that we do. What are you going to talk about? I want to get uh, this guy, <laughs> J- Jamie Deluxe, on our podcast with us. Who is he? You've never watched his videos? I have not. He really only does videos about, like, um... Kid fuckers. Yeah, kid fuckers and child sex trafficking and stuff that's in in prominent places like in politics or in um, um, Hollywood or whatever. And it's not like weird kid QAnon podcast. shit. It's not QAnon shit at all. It's like it very all comes from this place. Um, a lot of it does anyway. Uh, this website, anonymous sources. But yeah, where they may be anonymous, it's not like that that book that the guy from CNN wrote called Anonymous Sources. And he ties them into things that that people got in trouble for, or times when when people that were famous, you know, he'll look at the time, the time when this happened on the anonymous website, and then he'll go on and and like look for when somebody got in trouble at the same time. I mean, he's got all kinds of you, Don Henley, and like it's it's insane from the Eagles. Yeah, it's very like it's. I think he's spot on a lot of times. I really do. Huh. He does a lot of research into it, and he's really it's really interesting information. I'm always really interested to he, see it. He's got low subs, so he might help help us out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He didn't make much money. He's not, like, huge or anything. Well, no, I mean... 72K any, subs. Yeah, any money he would make. I mean, YouTube demonetizes everything he ever makes, so, like, yeah. he's not going to see any of it. Because he's talked about some, like, pretty prominent people. He's funny, too. Yeah. He can be. I mean, his, his content's really serious, but... It's he, not just like murder porn, but just pen- right. pedophilia? No, no, no. <laughs> it's like... Uh, this happened, and then this happened. No, he's... he. Uh, it's not overly serious, the way he presents it. Yeah, he presents it in kind of a funny way to make it more palatable. There's nothing more funny than that topic. Than kid fucking. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> Blast. <laughs> <laughs> he does uh, other stuff, too. There's some other things. He did one on coronavirus recently about how it's all a, a sham, and... I think you need to find like fucking people who truly believe in Bigfoot or like some I like, definitely want real some good of those wackos, yeah, you know that'd what be I mean, great. Yeah. to interview. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess you could just interview each other because we were both pretty crazy on the stuff that we've seen. Yeah. You know? I wish I could remember the name of that guy that was on that podcast from the, and he was like a Bigfoot hunter, but he had this like crazy existential experience that. Oh, I'll, f- I'll find it. Y- yeah, you should. I have it. I, I, I want to know because that I, shit was dope. I would all love gra- to talk all, to that guy. All gas, no breaks. Just did a, a a Bigfoot episode. I haven't seen it yet though. You ever watch that? I've never watched that. 
It's just a fucking goofy show. Like a guy, a kid pretends to be a fucking news reporter or whatever. Tim Heidecker picked it up, so you know it's yeah. like, it's probably gonna be slimy as shit now. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I don't know. He just go up and interview people. Like a lot of the ones I like are like at like consciousness expos and stuff where the, yeah. the people need to be interviewed. Their voices need to be heard. They are right. marginalized, and the meek will inherit the earth. And right. they'll do that by having mock interviews with children. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I uh, there was this guy. He he did this this uh, this long. He's, he's a Bigfoot hunter, and he actually has a, a YouTube channel. Him and this other guy, and he talked about how basically he had like an experience with an interdimensional, essentially. Yeah, like with the the Bigfoot story. Like it was crazy. He wasn't out there looking for Bigfoot either. He was just out there chilling. For once, usually his he, videos do are completely centered around him going around Florida and all these fucking palm trees with these. Giant mosquitoes and the oh, hot, there's some disturbing wasteland. shit in his fucking videos. Too. Oh yeah, it's but weird. He um, really, stuff he's caught on camera. Yeah, it's not really stuff that he's caught on camera. It's just his experiences. It's just his experiences oh. and the shit that they've seen. Like I've, I've. But I genuinely believe every word that this guy says because I've never seen like a, a, I don't know, an old like 62 year old man like break crying, down in tears, crying and shit over this because shit, it was yeah. so intense. And really, it just went to, I don't know, validate a lot of the, uh, the ideas that we've had about what. Things like Bigfoot, Bigfoot yeah. actually are. Like they're all like kind of combined. They're all kind of like part of the same thing. And it's just this, uh, basically they're just interdimensionals and they're just showing us these little pieces because they can kind of paint in this world. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like nothing to them. They can come in and out of it whenever they want and show okay. us whatever they want us to see. And basically that's what he's... And, and, uh, and when you watch some of his early stuff, like he doesn't think that way in the beginning. And then all of a sudden the videos stop for a long time, like almost a year. And then he comes on somebody else's podcast and talks to them about how he like had this crazy experience and they they sat him down in a chair, wouldn't let him get up, and they're like, We're we're hunting you, you know. It was wild. He referred to it as mind speak, which is basically That's how they communicated with him was with mind speak. Yes. I'm sure some people out there might understand what uh, what it's like to have I guess uh, it could be described as like an instant download of information it's not like a string of thoughts it's not like a well thought out hypothesis it's just information that suddenly is there and it makes sense and you and you know it but a lot of times like it, i don't know when it happens to me like i don't really feel like i came up with it for instance but um that's what he refers to it as in, in the video is like mind speak and that it's in that instance it was not this like beautiful grandiose thing that it was petrifying he said they raped his mind essentially because they were uh you know in their planting these statements without uh you know his consent and they were all ne like to. mostly negative and they were all we're negative trust this guy that was brain raped with Bro. negative thoughts yes i would I love will. to get this guy on yes <laughs> i absolutely trust the the brain rape victim yeah i'm just saying like well what were they doing to his brain inception type shit like maybe maybe he's not to be trusted that's all i'm getting maybe, yeah oh yeah like maybe they warped his yeah well, no. he said it was all negative so what he, good comes after that he got away from it Oh, escaped. Then he almost had a heart, like he, um, he almost had a heart attack um, shortly after that happened. And they told him while they sat him down, like, we can kill you with a heart attack, or we can kill you Whatever with a Whatever your physical weaknesses. We will exploit it. Huh. Well, that's shitty. Whether yeah. that's diabetes or heart problems or, you know, cancer. They could, they could move in and out of the veil. And he's like, and they called it a veil. That's what the word they used was veil. Yeah. And that they... Um, they explained a lot of things, like uh, a musky smell being them ripping the veil a little bit because some of the pe some of the entities that are younger that don't know what they're doing can they'll fuck up and leave a trace. They leave can't a trace, like yeah. seamlessly move in and out. But the older ones can. And what are they? He, he interdimensional. Said, interdimensional. I mean, he said that they were the beings from under the earth is what he said okay kind of going into like the navajo the shit or whatever right yeah it does yeah. match up they with a lot of those theories yeah, yeah they speak of people that came from under the under earth. the earth it says yeah. it in the bible too that god made the the you know the angels in heaven the humans on earth and and those that that are and everything under the earth is what it says well another yeah. thing that they mention in genesis that i don't think anybody yeah, actually understands is uh the firmament what the what the fuck is the firmament? Well, if you're a flat earther, you're very yeah. familiar with well, the firmament. Well, that's, that's not yeah. what the fuck yeah. the firmament is. Not, I not I think in it's my the veil. opinion. Yeah, for sure. It's the veil. Yeah, it's keeps the veil you between these, these two the different or whatever. Not just realities. understanding, but also keeps anything that exists 
further than it, this span this span of light. Yeah, it keeps all that shit out. You know what I mean? Okay. It doesn't necessarily keep it out, or just prevents you from. It seeing prevents it. you it prevents from seeing you yeah. from getting there. Yeah, oh, it still exists. But it's, I yes. think it's I think it's there to protect us too. Yeah. So I don't think you know they. I don't think things can just like anything can just come in here. I think it has to be thought about for a long time and practiced for a long time. You know, these things are probably whatever these things are, are probably ancient. Yeah. As opposed to us, but apparently they'll come through hunt a human by leading them out in the middle of the woods over a long period of time it'll take like months and months sometimes years and uh then they'll you know um make themselves known a little bit more every time yeah and, and make them think make them feel like they're on a treasure hunt and they'll walk out there in the middle of the woods get lost they'll and basically then they'll bait you and then they'll suck them into their their reality which is apparently toxic to us is what he said which was crazy like and they're feeding off of it or whatever feeding off the victim and he basically, in so many words, described uh, what some might convey as, like, uh, you know, shadow people. Those oh, things yeah. that, you know, that people will see during sleep paralysis or, like, out of the corner of your eye, things like that. Shadow people is definitely... He referred to them as the hooded black figures. But, like, obvi- clearly that's what it is. Yeah, but he said that he had seen hooded black figures out in the woods. Yeah. You know. Okay. So. And like, in his home. Yeah, and, well, no, not his home. It no, was that's right. his around home. his home and at his friend's home. But apparently you can, like, uh, create a barrier in your mind. Um, to where you don't have to out. see him? Yes. Yeah, though that you makes can keep sense. him out, yeah. I experience sleep paralysis, and I yeah, don't have too. visual hallucinations. I have, I have auditory twice, hallucinations, so. Yeah. When What's I, that like? Um, talking. So I have sleep paralysis like most people do, um, I feel it coming on. It feels like waves, electricity pulsing through my body or whatever. And uh, and fear comes with it, like a primal fear or whatever, because you're not in control, but you're, you're aware. So uh, mostly it'll just be situations in which I'm like, uh, no, I'm there in that state, and I'm trying to fight it away, and then there'll be people talking. Uh, the last time was when I was uh, working. We were staying in a, a lake house in, in uh, Lake Conroe, and I was up there at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon sleeping. And then I drifted into a sleep paralysis state. And I thought my cat had bit my finger. My cat does, doesn't go on the road with me. So she wasn't there. But I thought my cat had bit my finger. And there was a male voice in the bathroom. Which faced away from my room. And it was like saying, come here, come here. Get over here. Come here, come here. <laughs> and I yeah, fought it and I woke weird. up. But that, that's basically the auditory hallucination. It's just like negative speak and stuff like that. Right. Weird. Yeah, I've, I've just never heard of that before, so but that's interesting. I don't ever see anything, so well, I think I it's do. probably a barrier. That's so, most of what yours are. Yeah, so, the, well, so it's happened two main times. But the scariest time that it happened, I was, um, I'm going to go ahead and tell the story. I know you all know the story, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it. Yeah. So it's, um, let's see, I was 20 years old, either 20 or 21. And I was at uh, the, my girlfriend at the time. I was at her house, and uh, at that point, I worked days and she worked nights. And I went in to to, to uh, go to sleep into her bedroom, and um, she was still in the living room though. And I fell asleep probably at around midnight, and I woke up in the middle of the night and she was still out there in the living room um i could hear her out there like watching tv or something like that and um i I looked over and i saw this like figure float into the um into the room and it and it looked like a like it had a hat on its head and and like a long trench coat but you couldn't see its feet and you couldn't see its hands and it floated in and it it uh it it would grab it grabbed at her drawers and would pull the drawers but like the drawers wouldn't open and then it would stick its hands in there and but there was nothing to stick its hands it, it made it look like he was opening drawers and putting his hands in there and grabbing shit but he went around the room he started at the edge of the room and he he slowly made his way around like pulling open every drawer except the drawers didn't open and I was just paralyzed the whole time. I couldn't move. I couldn't say anything. And he got all the way around to the to the drawer that was closest to me. And then he leaned right over my face. And I woke up. 
it, it, it was like I was able to move and get out of it. You yeah. know what I mean? It wasn't like waking up. Well, it was kind of like waking up. I don't know if it was a dream. But then after looking it up and reading about it, it looked like this classic hat man thing. Yeah, At that point, man. I didn't even know what that shit was. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, I had no idea that that was a thing that that you would see. I feel like most people that go to look it up for the first time don't yeah. realize that that's a thing. Because it like happened to Justin, too. Yeah, but his was a hooded figure. Mine was, was a I guy with his a... his was a hat no, because no, his daughter had no, said his, something his about His daughter it. said something about a, that man in the hat. Mm. But... Uh, but he saw a, a like a, a cloaked figure. I saw a a man with a fedora on and a trench coat. Yeah, that's kind of classic hat man right there. Yeah, and he had yellow eyes. Oh, weird. Yeah, see, I've been lucky enough not to see anything. Um, now, I do question when I was a child uh, where I was laying in bed and I had a really bad fear of the dark and everything. I usually slept under the covers. And one night I woke up and I peeked through the covers and I seen a gray alien. My dad had a gray alien mask, so I wrote it off as my dad scaring me. But, right. you know, growing up, you're like, no, it wasn't my dad. But, you know, I think that's the only thing I've seen in a, a sleep state. Yeah, and what's weird, didn't you confront your dad about it, like, a while? Like, because Brandon told me that Brad came to him, which your dad, Brad, and Brandon, his friend. Uh-huh. Who's also my friend. Jeez, nice. Why? I don't know. I'm not trying to mention a lot of So that. I guess I'll start over then. Um, your your dad's friend told uh-huh. me that he that your dad told him uh-huh. that, he, that he didn't do it and he didn't know what it was all about huh that he yeah. really didn't do it but I mean he could just be bullshitting yeah for sure um, yeah I don't really remember the asking him about it but I do know that I um, he wouldn't have done that you know what I mean so it's kind of a weird thing for yeah, a no one do. Would, I don't think anyone would do that like go in and fuck with their kid and put on a gray alien mask yeah so I definitely don't see myself ever going in there to purposefully intentionally scare my child yeah I mean it was outside your window right no no no, no. this oh, was, was in, in, in the room oh. yeah yeah like within a foot from my face oh okay yeah that's terrifying so, you know <laughs> but um yeah Brandon uh, fuck I don't know. I just feel weird saying people's names. But um, he had told me the story of the little alien man biting his finger as a child in his bedroom. Did he tell oh, you yeah, that story? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a weird thing. I've never heard that story. We ought to get him light. on to tell us about that story. We'll see. He kind of does his own thing now. I know he does, but I'll hit him up and talk to him. Yeah. Well, um, I guess a bright light came into his room, and then there's a little... He described it as like an old man that was real small and little, and yeah. he like stuck really his finger out. Really wrinkly face, like he looked really old. Yeah, and he stuck his finger out or something to he him. He went to slap him. He went to slap him, and he bit his finger, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. he's, he has a scar because he bled. Oh, wow. That's he had to wrap weird. his finger in a blanket or something. Whoa. Mm-hmm. He still has a scar from it. Yeah, that's too weird. Yeah, it's strange. It's like, you know, I had that one experience with the hat man thing or whatever, and it was weird because part of his body was translucent and part of his body wasn't. But, I mean, I was I was awake. I was in the room looking at him. I moved my head over. That's all I could do is move my head. And I looked at him. And then I couldn't move anymore after that. Like, I turned my head and it it's like my body froze and I couldn't move anymore. And I tried to move to get out of it. And I knew if I could move again that I could get out of it. And finally, I, like, jumped out of bed to get out of it. But, like, there was, there's been two other times where I've seen something. One time was here at the house we're in now, and another time was at the apartment I was in shortly before that experience happened. Oh, wow. And that one was in the middle of the day. When it happens in the middle, because I was sleeping during the day, because I was working at nights. And uh, when it happens during the day, it's a little creepier. Like, it was just this thing. It looked like a, a bald, naked person squatting at the edge of my bed basically like over in the corner of the room my bed was on the floor damn and it looked like it was just like squatting and staring at me and uh and the other the one that was here it looked the same it looked it, he looked like he was uh half burned it was weird cuz the lights were on and i could see its skin for some reason yeah and it's like it was peeking through the door because our door was cracked to our room. We always leave it a little bit open. How tall was it? Um, it was short. It was about, I would say, like, 
five foot tall, maybe a little shorter. And the other thing was tall, though. It was yeah. squatted down, and it was still three and a half feet tall. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's something you don't really want to wake up to see. Yeah, and I couldn't move, and then finally I was... He never got up or anything. He just sat there, and uh, I, I finally got out of it Yeah, and woke up. Sleep paralysis is uh, one of the weirdest things that happens to humans. It is very strange. I mean, you know, doctors are like, they don't even know what the fuck to think about it. Yeah, hypnagogic hallucinations or whatever. And I yeah. think it is a mixture of both. I, I, I believe uh, it's a chemical imbalance in which your body is being put down, right. but your mind's still active. But right. I, I really think it's the fear. The fear that you have in a situation, I think it draws certain things into your realm. It or could whatever. be. Uh, it could yeah. be definitely that. thought that before. It, it's definitely not like uh, just just hallucinations but, no. but i don't think any hallucination is just hallucinations you know what i mean you take a bunch of dmt you're not just seeing shit because of chemicals in your brain that are going off like you're yeah there's when you put those chemicals in your brain it allows you to see things that you wouldn't normally you be would, able to exactly that you wouldn't normally be able to see so i didn't break through on dmt but um i definitely hallucinated and <coughs> excuse me there's a there's a very strange feeling that is very abduction-like because there was shadow-like entities in the room with me and they were uh, they were manipulating my reality, showing me things or whatever, and they were over me almost as if I was on an examining table and they were doctors. So that was very strange to think about that. That and, is strange. Yeah. And that being a natural occurring thing in your brain, DMT. Right. Like are people having it, uh, drops dumps of dmt in their dream state and then they're hallucinating or coming in contact with whatever that's interesting that you say that because the other day which um by the way firstly um what (laughs) an interesting idea is the uh like what if those things always exist there and you're just in that state being able to see them but uh, for seconds we were actually talking a couple days ago about um what causes uh like the you know being able to see like those figures <clears throat> and one of the uh, theories was that um like people who have like sleep apnea or okay so there's these main uh, arteries that run down your spine and for the reason we thought this is because uh, nathan only experiences sleep apnea whenever he's on his back whenever he falls asleep on his back that's really the only time it ever happens um, it's also when I experienced sleep paralysis, I was on my That's back. what I meant, yeah. Yeah, you was like a lot sleep, too. Yeah, yeah, sleep paralysis on his back. And it might be because of those two veins that exist there are being constricted by your weight. And so it's like decreasing... Slowing down your heart Slowing rate. down your heart rate and decreasing, you know, blood pressure to your heart. And so, in a way, maybe because of that, it's like causing like a little dump of DMT or because ah, it, because then, maybe your body has like tricked itself into thinking like oh I'm close to death and you and pierce the veil yeah, yeah and exactly. maybe these interdimensionals they're there waiting yeah. you know what I mean maybe they're, they're always, always there, there. Yeah. but yeah, now now you can sense. see them because you're closer to that state of death and maybe that's what yeah. you see whenever like, you die we view it let's as, hope not we well, view it as a for as, some people there will be other things after that but maybe that's right. the first thing that you see you yeah. know maybe maybe some of us run away and some of us get caught you know what I mean yeah, That's, I guess. The only reason I say that is because of the Tibetan Book of the Dead does reference these 12, uh, like, angry spirits of death, or is it eight? And one of the first ones are, like, these these black masses, basically. And so that might be one of the first things you encounter whenever you die, and then you encounter after you get past those, there's these other things, and they, like, basically, as he so gracefully put it, like, clean you off to get you ready to pass on to your next life. Your next life, yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, it comes in, and it's like a... You know, like, like a little have, shrimp, like a sucker fish that that clings onto the the the, the, the nasty sh- eats all the nasty shit off the sides of the tank. Okay, so it comes in and cleans off all your bad shit, and then you go and reincarnate. You know. Yeah. Why does uh Why does Western society have like the lamest afterlife? Where like you know the the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. It's They're the like one cool. that's most <laughs> conducive to the the the. Uh, the consciousness that they want to promote so they want yes. us all to be in a state where we're alert and problem solving they all want us to be in a problem solving and alert state of consciousness which and is not what that's the what, most like conducive Eastern right right uh, practices try right. to absolve or, Indi- or like uh, Native American either Native yeah. Americans are like oh you, you be know one like, with everything if, at you, all times. if you're seeing shit and you have the the signs and symptoms of schizophrenia you're a shaman. You're a shaman. Ah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and there might be something to it. Oh, for sure. Because there's that thing 
there's an actual condition where people who spend enough time around a schizophrenic start to have experience, empathy and yeah. relate yeah. with their experiences and that's creepy as fuck yeah i only uh i only knew one schizophrenic person and this was a man that i was in a halfway house with <laughs> I, I, I i was uh the fact nighttime. that it's a man must have uh, been a telltale that it was actually pretty severe because men don't very rarely experience schizophrenia mostly a women oh, wow. so it's not targeted it's not that it's it's rare though it's no like, it's just not as common yeah it's not as common anyway, but generally symptoms are very severe in men go ahead i'm sorry i was standing there in my room or whatever and i heard him talking in the bathroom and i opened up the door and was like okay he's talking in the bathroom and he the things he was saying he was like all right now take off your pants and I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, this guy's got a girl here. What and it was very uncharacteristic of this guy because he's extremely nerdy, very strange. Yeah. And uh, he's like, come on, take off, hey, take off your pants. Take off your pants now. And so I'm like, holy shit. And so, you know, my little self, I'm like, I'm going to wait around and see who the fuck he has in the bathroom with him. <laughs> well, I did. Wait. Bump it. Hello? Yeah. Start back at, um, you were going to wait around oh yeah knowing me i, I want to know who's in the bathroom with this guy because right. it's so uncharacteristic of him to have a female <laughs> and uh so you know i'm sitting around in the hall waiting 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 finally the door opens right and uh, he leaves and i'm like what's up he's like hey how's it going <laughs> and i'm like i'm <laughs> waiting for careful. someone else to walk out and no one walked out and so i walk in and there was no one there and oh, he was wow. just in there telling himself to take his <laughs> pants off so if you're gonna be schizophrenic at least be that type of schizophrenic because that's lit because maybe you have like <laughs> another sexual partner <laughs> that you're hallucinating <laughs> masturbation is never done alone much yeah. better than like having tom brokaw speak to you and tell <laughs> you to do things <laughs> I'd want to get <laughs> fucked by my fucking personalities. <laughs> yeah, that'd be much better. Take though. off your pants, big boy. <laughs> All right. It's so much better than, oh, yeah, now that I'm doing the evening news, let me take a moment to tell you that your mom <laughs> is stealing your thoughts. <laughs> I've only ever known one person with schizophrenia, and it was a known one person that had schizophrenia my entire life and that was uh pretty intensive because she was one of those people that is already it, it almost makes me ashamed to be into the same interest as these people one of those new agey people you know crystals and tarot cards and and light healing and whatever um and i don't know if that's just a, a ploy to make that that kind of thinking look ridiculous so as to you know um uh, get like give it less credibility or if there's really just that many people out there that are fucking stupid that are attracted to it because they see the the positive potential in it but like after i don't know after a point i guess she was probably doing a lot of dope maybe that had something to do with it i don't know but um she kind of went off the deep end and had convinced herself that uh, nathan and i were trying to ruin her marriage even though we had literally no part in their personal lives whatsoever oh i never heard about that yeah who who was it? Uh, JC. Oh. Yeah, you've definitely oh, heard about that. I thought you said your family member. No, uh, although I'm, I am nice. convinced that one of my family members does have schizophrenia. schizophrenia. I had a family member that had schizophrenia. JC did have schizophrenia. She does have schizophrenia. You remember JC? Yeah. I mean, I'll probably cut some of this out because. Yeah, yeah, I, think I don't want to. Anonymity. Know. Yeah, I don't want to. 100%. Do that. But, but anyway, yeah. You just bleep the name. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Well, she was, like, diagnosed with it. She was. She, and like, they took shaved her, her. They took her kids away. She mm -hmm. shaved all of her hair off. Sad, bro. It is kind of sad. All right. So, anyways, um, I had a, I had an aunt. I never met her. It was actually my mother's aunt. She had schizophrenia. You never met her? I never met her, no. She used to drink two gallons of milk a day. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. She was super fat. Shame. And she had an Indian friend that would come and talk to her, like a, a Native American boy. That would come and talk to her. He was a chief, and he would come and talk to her uh, through her window. Oh, all right. In the middle of the night. Yeah. Only at night. Come and talk to her. And the thing Maybe is... Maybe I'm also schizophrenic, because at first I was like, oh, really? He must have just been empathetic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I thought he was talking about a real person as I well. I really did. At first. No, I, I, okay, this I'm was glad that's what he, he must have yes. really just been visiting her because he thought that maybe she was being inhabited by multiple spirits, but oh no, never mind. I was he thinking, was a hallucination. <laughs> <laughs> Before you said chief, I was thinking like a shaman that came by and come talk to her and like try to learn some secrets to pass on to his maybe, tribe. Maybe, may I don't know the details. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just know that's how it was told to me by my family, uh-huh. and they're all fucking like rednecks as shit. You know what I mean? They don't. They would never think like what we're saying right now. We could never discuss with them. I could never say that to these people. Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe, maybe legit. She was like, you know, in in touch with some. Some deeper shit or something, you know. But everyone's like, "You're fucking crazy. You drink two gallons of milk a day. That's gross." For sure, man. <laughs> like, uh, you know, if you if you look at a lot of the characters in the Bible in present day, if they were saying some of the shit that they were saying to the people in America, they your ass would get locked up. Yeah, yeah you can't Real say quick. shit. Like that. You can't say yeah. shit like yeah. that anymore. So, like Daniel, just, the you know the prophetic dreamer would be yeah. a crazy person. Yeah, that's not okay. You the, can't do that here. He's basically, you know, <laughs> responsible for the book of Revelation and many other uh, books in the Bible, but yeah, he would just they be probably labeled fucking as a, nailed him person. to a board for that one. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, maybe she was like actually in tune with some uh, weird like psychic connection with what she later discovered to be, you know, an Indian chief, and they all just wrote her off as like, oh, yeah, he's coming to her window at night. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, she was, at that point, she was diagnosed schizophrenic, so I don't know. I, I really got, don't feel like psychologists know what the fuck they're doing, though. They don't. I mean, they, <laughs> the, the human mind is something that you, it's you like. You really can't put it in a box like frontier. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Human brain. It really is. Yeah. It's not the brain. It's, it's not the space. mind. It's not space. It's the mind. The mind. Yeah. The mind is separate from the brain. The final they've, frontier. They've act- <laughs> they have discovered that like the brain is actually separate from the mind. I Here's- got blessed by a crackhead in Dallas. Lucky you. I did too. No shit. Lucky I wonder if it was the same one. Yeah, I don't know. So Jelly. I just gave this uh, like maybe 40 to 50 year old crackhead white male um, like a couple bucks or something at an intersection. And uh, he was like explaining how he was about to bless me and he would like make these weird sounds and he would make finger guns and then he would like shoot the air and oh wow said, and and like i was like all right man well uh he said something like well i don't stop do- he said something like he said i don't do nope that. do it again i don't still hello yeah he said i don't do drugs or anything i'm gonna get some food and i was like i don't really care <laughs> what you're doing with it that's not why i gave you money or whatever and i was like just watch out for the cops and he was like oh yeah they protect me from the cops don't worry and he like made more finger gun motions oh, wow. and stuff i was like all right lit ass fucking crackhead uh, yeah. fighting a psychic war yeah that wasn't that wasn't what i that, experienced that's his uh, uh his existential homies man yeah <laughs> Mine was this guy. Gang. He washed my windows for me. Like I, I stopped at a gas yeah. station oh. in the hood, and like he came up. I was doing Uber, you know. I had to go in there and try to find a bathroom, bro, because it's hard to take a piss when you're an Uber driver. That should be something that's talked about, because that's not. Nobody talks about that. It's in a fucking Gatorade bottle, like I a did. Man. I did, but you know, that's like literally all he ever did. That's I did. I had to do that Mistakes a lot. Mistakes happen. Yeah. Exactly. And then what the fuck do you do? Because especially if you drive to work, what the fuck do you do? now I'm in Dallas, two hours away from my home, and there's piss all over the seat. And I have to keep driving because it's not worth it to go home at this point. What do I do? You, uh, I don't know. I I've, park. I tell you, you what I do. Breeze. No, I, I go and I park behind, like in an alley somewhere, right? And Because uh, it's on my pants, too. So I go ahead and, and uh, turn the heater on in the middle of the summer or spring or what the fuck ever. And I, I crouch over one of the vents, and then I, I turn off one of the vents. I crouch over two of the vents, <laughs> and I take the other vent, and I point it at the seat. Okay. I like to imagine what this Did looked he, like. Oh, yeah. There were some people that saw it. <laughs> and they were like... They had, yeah, they kept they, they got on their phone and like started calling somebody. and <laughs> The cops. I don't know. I drove away shortly after that because my pants were dry. Oh, well, that's good that they dried quickly. Yeah, it worked really fast. It, you took, were, it only took about 15 minutes. I don't think you were using the right bottle. I've pissed a lot in the vehicle. He was, was like using the cup. a Schlotzky's cup. I was, yeah, I was using well, the cup. fuck. There's your issue right there, Nathan. You <laughs> need a bottle with a lid. It was a cup, and then and then what happened is, like, I, I, I was like, I pissed, and then I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then I sat down, 
and I pissed my pants. <laughs> I guess my prostate's <laughs> fucked up. I don't know. Maybe I have cancer. <laughs> oh, who knows? I hope not. Not kind of his go-to. Wood. His go-to answer for any problem he has. Maybe, maybe I have cancer. Yeah. Although I do remember you telling me multiple stories of like.